today we're gonna create an awesome glowing rainbow in Affinity Photo. Roll the intro. What's up y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rens, I'm a digital artist from the Netherlands helping you create amazing photo manipulations in Affinity Photo. And today we're gonna create an awesome rainbow. Actually, I was supposed to record this video last week, but well, I got my wisdom teeth removed and I kind of look like this. So I didn't want to bother you with that. And honestly, it hurt more than I expected and the recovery also took a little bit longer than I expected. So I took a week off, but I'm back with a new video. So let me show you how to create this awesome rainbow let's go all right so we've jumped into affinity photo and it's time to get some rainbow up and running first things first let's create a rainbow so how to do this we want to select our rectangle tool which is this one right over here you can also select it by pressing u on the keyboard now what we want to do is we want to go to the middle of our canvas and simply click and drag a small square or rectangle in the middle of our screen now the next thing that I want to do is I want to fill this rectangle with a certain gradient and this is a custom gradient that I made for you. It will be available for you but first let me show you what we have to do. Now once we have created this rectangle you want to go up to your swatches panel and you want to click on the drop down menu and you want to go to I am Renzi rainbow gradients. The next thing that I want to do is I want to fill this rectangle with the gradient. So I'm going to select the, uh, the rectangle and uh, you want to go to your swatches panel and simply click on the gradient and there we have it. Now if you cannot find your swatches panel simply go to view go to studio and click on swatches and your panel will pop up somewhere in your screen. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to drag this thing from the left side to the right side on our canvas. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit and I'm simply going to zoom out and hold command and drag this thing all the way out so that it stretches from side to side. Now I want to make sure that this thing is in the middle of my screen so I'm going to go to my arrange buttons. I'm going to select this one and this one and hit apply and now you can see it is exactly in the middle of our canvas. So if you want to have a narrow rainbow you simply want to keep this thing narrow but if you want a wider rainbow you can simply stretch this out as wide as you want. But I'm going to go for a narrow rainbow something like this maybe a little more narrow. And what we want to do is with our rectangle rainbow layer selected we want to go up to filters go to distort and we want to select rectangular to polar and now you can see that we've got a nice circular rainbow however our rainbow is inverted so the purple is on the outside and the red is on the inside and this is exact opposite of what I want so I'm gonna press command Z once and twice I'm gonna right click on my rectangle and I'm gonna transform this thing and flip it vertically so that the purple is at the top and that the, the red is at the bottom. And now with my rectangle layer selected, I can go to filters, distort and rectangular to polar. And uh, you can see that the assistant actually turned our layer into a pixel layer. But now you can see that now our rainbow is normal. So the outside is red and the inside is purple. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, stretch this thing out a little bit so that we get a nice curve. Something like this looks fine to me. And let's position this thing. So I'm going to press V on the keyboard to select my move tool. And I want the rainbow to start right over here. And I want it to end behind this little wavy thing, let's say. So I'm going to position this one something like here. And maybe share this a little bit, something like so. And this looks about fine to me. All right, now, of course, we're not going to need the bottom part of our rainbow, so we can actually mask it out. So I'm going to click on my mask icon and select the mask. I'm going to press B on the keyboard to select my brush tool. I'm going to select a soft round brush or maybe increase the hardness just a little bit. Something like this. And I'm going to mask out the bottom part of our rainbow, let's say, so that it kind of looks natural and that it's kind of, um, yeah, floating on the water, let's say. So something like hey real quick if you've been enjoying this video so far don't forget to drop a like and of course if you like my content overall make very sure to subscribe to the channel to never miss any future upload oh and by the way watch till the end if you want to download the gradient i mentioned earlier in the video let's get back into the tutorial something like this looks fine to me all right so there we have a nice rainbow but of course it is not glowing yet so let's create some glow 
Now, first thing that I want to do is I want to rasterize and trim this thing because I'm not going to need any pixels anymore. Because if I move this thing up, you can see that I still have a little bit of rainbow left outside of our canvas and I'm not going to need this. So I'm going to uh, right click and I'm going to click rasterize and trim. And now you can see that we only have our rainbow left. Now, first thing what I want to do is I want to set this one to blend mode screen. So we're going to go up here in the layers panel and I'm going to go to screen and click right over here. And now you can see that it already looks like it's glowing a little bit more. But of course, we want more glow. So let's actually rename this one rainbow for now. And we are going to create a duplicate. So I'm going to select my rainbow layer and press command J to duplicate it. And then I want to apply a blur. So I'm going to go to my live filters and I'm going to click on Gaussian blur. And I'm going to increase the radius of this Gaussian blur just a little bit, maybe to around 20 pixels. And that looks pretty fine to me. So now it already starts to look like our rainbow is glowing, but we can add some more glow. So what I want to do is select our newest rainbow layer. I'm going to press command J once again. I'm going to go back into our Gaussian blur and I'm going to increase the radius from 20% to maybe 40%. So something like this cross it off and maybe add some more glow as a final glow. So I'm going to select the top rainbow layer, press command J once again, go into our Gaussian blur layer and maybe increase it even more to about, I don't know, 50 or 60%. So let's cross this off. And there we have a very nice glowing rainbow. Now, of course, we are not done yet because we want to add some reflection and I want to add some shininess at the bottom or at the foot of the rainbow, let's say. So what I want to do first is I want to group all of these rainbow layers together. So I'm going to select the top rainbow layer. I'm going to shift click to the bottom rainbow layer and press command G on my keyboard to group everything together. And this is I'm going to rename rainbow. Now, what I want to do now is I want to create a new pixel layer below our rainbow layer. So I'm going to click my background layer. I'm going to click on a new pixel layer so that it actually uh, appears below our rainbow layer. Let's say I'm going to use a soft round brush. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to press B on the keyboard and I want to place a white dot somewhere around uh, the middle of our screen. Now I'm going to use the move tool to transform this white blob, let's say. So I'm going to press V on the keyboard and I'm going to squeeze this thing in and position this at the bottom of our rainbow. Maybe zoom in a little bit and let's position this something like. Maybe something like this looks pretty cool to me and I'm going to duplicate this thing. So I'm going to press command J, drag this one over to the other side and I'm going to drag this one. Position this one, maybe something like so. Now, last thing that I want to do is I want to apply a reflection of our rainbow. So what I want to do is I want to duplicate our whole rainbow group. So I'm going to press command J on uh, with my rainbow layer selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize this layer so that it's actually going to be uh, a flattened layer, let's say. So now we don't have all of these group layers anymore, but it's just this one uh, rainbow layer. I want to set the blend mode back to screen and I want to flip it horizontally and then vertically. So I'm going to select my rainbow layer and I'm actually going to rename this one reflection. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to transform it first, flip it horizontally and then right click once again and then transform it vertically or flip it vertically. I want to drag it below everything, but not below our background, obviously. And then, then I'm going to drag this down and position it somewhere right around here. And this looks about fine. Maybe we can uh, squeeze it in a little bit, something like this. And this looks about fine to me. Now, there are two more things that I want to do to make a realistic water reflection. And if you want to have a more in-depth tutorial on water reflections, you can check it out right over here because I already made a tutorial on this one. But let me just create a nice water reflection for this one. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to increase the contrast of my background because if I disable my rainbow layers, you can see that we don't have a lot of contrast in the background. So I'm going to select my background layer and press command L on the keyboard. I'm going to clip it to my background layer and I'm going to increase the highlights a little bit. So we get some more contrast, let's say, and let's cross this off. 
Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to apply a Gaussian blur live filter. So I'm gonna go to my live filters, I'm gonna go to Gaussian blur, and I don't want it to be clipped to my levels adjustment layer, but I want to, it to be clipped to my background layer. And now I'm simply gonna increase my radius to let's say about 12% or 12 pixels I should say, and let's cross this off. So these layers we're not gonna keep them but i want to make it easier for affinity photo to make a nice displacement map so that's why we've done this so let's go to our reflection layer and let's enable it for now and what we want to do is we want to go to live filters and we want to scroll down a little bit and we want to select displace so we're going to create a displacement map and very important is we want to load map from layers beneath. So click on this one right over here. And now you can drag this one to the left or to the right. And you can see that we've got this really nice curvatures in our rainbow. And this just gives a more realistic water reflection effect. So let's drag this one to the right to about 250 pixels or whatever. And let's cross this off. Now we can disable these both layers once again. And I'm going to show my rainbow layer. And there we have a very nice water reflection. Now we are not done yet because it is visible everywhere. Our water reflection at this moment. And in real life, if you would have a water reflection at some places, you cannot see the water reflection at some place you can see it. So I want to add some blend ranges to this layer. Now, one thing to know is that if I select my reflection layer and I'm going to go to my blend ranges right now, you can see that actually nothing is really happening. And the reason why is because we've got a displacement map or any other live filter attached to our pixel layer. And that is the reason why this blend range just doesn't work in this case. Now I found a workaround for this and that is by simply grouping the reflection layer. So I'm going to select the reflection layer and I'm going to press command G to group this thing together. And this I can rename it reflection. And now once I select this little cogwheel and I play around with my blend ranges, you can see that it actually does have effect on whatever we are doing. So what I want to make sure now is that everywhere where it's up to around 50% brightness, you can see the reflection, but everywhere where it's dark. So everywhere, let's say something like to 5%, you can say, now you can see that everywhere where it's dark, there's no reflection and everything where it's brighter, like right over here, you can see that we have got a reflection. And let me press command zero. Now, as mentioned before, the gradient that I've created to create this awesome rainbow is available for download for you for completely free. Simply go to buymeacoffee.com slash I am Renzi. And of course, if you want to support the channel and you appreciate what I'm doing for the Affinity Photo community, then feel very free to buy me a coffee or two. But of course, you don't have to to download the gradient. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Ciao, ciao.